Hello fellow orchid lovers, it's Danielle here with a video about Phalaenopsis orchid spikes and what do we do with them. So there is sort of, I guess, an eternal question with orchid growers as to what to do with Phalaenopsis spikes that are done blooming. Um, and if you want the short and simple answer, as far as I'm concerned, the answer is it's all a matter of personal preference. Um, some people don't like the way that flower spikes look without buds and blooms and so they have a tendency to just cut the spike off even when it's still green and that's fine. Some people wait to see if it will put out a secondary spike and that's fine. And some people um, don't cut it off until it turns brown. That's fine. That's actually where I land. And then some people never cut them off at all. So the reason for the choices that you make have to have a backing in how you want to grow. So the way that I try to grow is um, trying to mimic kind of what would happen in nature. Obviously, my orchids don't grow on trees. So that is um, right, right off the bat not what happens in nature. <laughs> but um, as far as I'm concerned, there's no one running around with scissors or a sharp knife in nature cutting these spikes off. And the plant kind of knows what it needs to do. Um, so for instance, um, like I said, I leave spikes intact until they turn brown. So this mini orchid I've had for quite a while now, um, going on almost a year I would say, and I have not removed her spike. She has had a green spike with no blooms for a very long time. But in my mind, there's a lot of nutrients in this spike and I wanna leave it in place so that if she decides she wants to reabsorb it and take those nutrients with it, she can. Um, some people feel that if you leave a spike like this in place, it's gonna stop the orchid from getting a primary, another primary spike. I can't comment on that. I've only been growing orchids successfully for a little over two years now. That may be the case, but my experience is that my orchids, when I leave them alone and let them do what they wanna do, have rewarded me. Um, an example is this beautiful orchid here. Many of you are familiar with her if you follow with me for a long time. So I've had her continually in bloom since I got her and I have her almost, I think it's almost two years now. So this is the spike she came with when I got her two years ago. It ends over here. And when I got her, she had blooms up to here. Those blooms fell off. I left the spike alone. She extended, got another five or six blooms. Those blooms fell off. I left the spike alone. It extended. She got another five or six blooms. Those blooms fell off. I left the spike alone. She got another branch with eight flowers. One of them has since fallen off, but eight flowers. I'm continuing to leave this orchid alone. <laughs> she could do whatever she wants. Clearly uh, she has a plan and I like that plan because it includes blooms. Um, so I'm letting her decide how long she wants to maintain the spike, if she wants to put out flowers on that spike, if she wants to reabsorb the spike, etc. cetera. Uh, same thing with this orchid. I got her from the supermarket. She was not in bloom. They had cut her spike and I left it alone. She decided to put out a secondary spike here. Some of the hot blooms up here have fallen off, but I mean, look at how many blooms she gave me. Just because I didn't mess with the spike, I let her decide what she wanted to do and look at how she reacted to that. Um, so yeah, I kind of just leave them alone. I mean, if this is something, some people really have an aversion to this. They think that this is ugly, that the, the green spike with no blooms and no buds is ugly. Personally, it doesn't bother me, and I look at it as a source of nutrients for the plant, so I just leave it in place. But if aesthetically you don't like the way this looks, cut it off, you know? Like, don't, don't let anyone tell you what to do. You decide what you like with your orchids and you go from there. Um, whether or not you cut off a flower spike is, is, unless the plant is in like deep distress, it really doesn't matter. It's a, it's a matter of personal preference. 
Um, you know, it's the same thing with this. Some people, they would see that there's only one bloom left on this and they would get rid of it. Or they would see that this part of the spike here has no blooms on it and they would get rid of it. This one over here only has one bloom, they would get rid of it. Personally, green is green to me, whether it's got blooms or not. I, I just leave it alone, I let it do its thing. And then this way, if it wants to reabsorb the nutrients, it can. Um, some other options that you have is you can trim spikes to see if you can get them to rebloom. So I'll give you a, for instance, uh, for instance, this orchid, she gave me 16 blooms. Um, as you can see, the spike is starting to brown from the tip and her flowers are starting to fade. Now, if I wanted to try to stop her from absorbing the nutrients and induce her to bloom again, I could cut back here and see if I could get her to rebloom. She does have a node here that's unused, so it's possible, it's not probable, but it's possible that she could do that. So if I wanted to try to see if I could get more blooms out of her on this spike, I could try to do something like that. Again, it's personal preference. Um, I, I usually just let them do their own thing. I kind of just, I'll see what she wants to do. Um, this is another example here. You can see she's absorbing this spike. So I just let her absorb those nutrients. Um, this long one here that she got a secondary spike off of, she is not absorbing the spike. So I'm gonna leave this one alone. She has a primary spike down here that she grew. She's not absorbing it. I'm gonna leave it alone. These ones, um, they're being reabsorbed. So I'll let her take the nutrients and then I'm gonna cut them because this one, there's no more nodes available for her to branch out on and this one as well. So even if she wanted to, there's nowhere on these spikes for her to put out more flowers, so I'm gonna cut the spikes off when she's done. This one's ready to be cut, as you can see. It's it's all, all the energy has gone out of it. This one really, all the energy has gone out of it. So that can be cut too. Um, but in my mind, um, you know, from observation, I have learned that they do, the vascular system of the plant is connected to the vascular system of the spike. And the reason why I know that is because I got an orchid that had one of those dyed spikes. So what they do, those blue orchids or purple orchids that you see in the store that have like that unrealistic color to them, what they do is they actually make a hole in the spike and they inject dye into the spike. And the dye goes up the spike. As you can see, there's some dye there in the, in the tip. Um, the dye goes up the spike and it colors the flowers, so you'll have blue flowers and et cetera, you know, whatever color that they decide they wanna dye it. Now, I bought this plant, it had had a dyed spike, it had been cut, um, she was no longer in bloom, she did bloom for me as you can see, but she's reabsorbing that. But the reason why I bring it to your attention is when I unpotted her and took a look at the bottom of her leaves, which she may not have very much of it left, there was blue dye evident in her leaves. So the blue dye didn't just go into her flowers, it also went into her structures, her leaves. So the nutrients that are in the spike also have the possibility and the capability of transferring through the vascular system of this plant. So I'm not going to remove this spike, I'm going to let her absorb the nutrients in it and benefit from all of this energy that's stored in the spike. So that's my preference. But again, if you think this is ugly, get rid of it, <laughs> cut it off. It's, no, it's not a big deal. Your, your plant is not gonna suffer if you don't like these spikes. They don't bother me. I, especially if it's green, I'll leave it eternally. I mean, if this, if this plant decides that it's gonna leave these green for like ever and just keep blooming off of this or putting out new ones or whatever the case may be, she can do what she wants. Again, I kind of feel like there's no one in nature running around taking spikes off of plants. And so I kind of let the plant decide what it wants to do. I feel like they pretty much know what they need. And if it needs to regenerate energy for roots, leaves, etc., it's not gonna support a spike anymore and it's gonna absorb that spike. If it has enough energy to support the spike, it's just gonna leave it there. 
So um, again, personal preference. What do you like? If you don't like the way that spikes look after the flowers are gone, cut them off. If they don't bother you and you wanna see if the plant will regenerate, I mean, I've had excellent results with that. You know, some people say your secondary spikes are not going to be as uh, robust as a primary spike, but I've proved that wrong. I mean, eight blooms on a tiny secondary spike, that's pretty good. Um, this one I think had 10, 10 blooms at one time. So, you know, it's a personal preference. It's whatever you wanna do. Um, so you make the decision. And that's the great thing about growing orchids is that you can decide to grow them the way that you like. Um, a lot of people don't agree with the hydroponic method that I grow in, but um, you know, over two years in and my plants are so, so healthy. I have so many spikes from this year. I, I'm just completely blown away by their reaction to it. And I heard a lot of people say, oh, that two year mark, you just wait. <laughs> After you hit that two year mark, your plants are gonna take a nosedive. Well, I haven't seen it yet. So um, maybe I'm just lucky, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you because I know that there's been a lot of conversations about whether or not you should cut flower spikes. Um, I personally don't, I don't, th this, I don't think they're unsightly and I want to keep those nutrients available to my plants. But if for some reason you don't like them, if you think that they're ugly and unsightly, uh, please feel free to just chop them right off. <laughs> so um, I just want people to know that there's a lot more freedom to growing orchids um, and they're very forgiving plants. Um, a lot of people are gonna run around and tell you what you're doing wrong, but it's, <laughs> You kind of have to learn by observance and learn by what your preference is. And don't be so quick um, all the time to worry about what other people are doing. If you watch your plants, they're gonna tell you what they, need, what they need. And I've said that from the very beginning. If you watch your plants, the plants are gonna tell you when they're not happy. The plants are gonna tell you when the flower spike needs to be trimmed because the plant's gonna reabsorb it. So um, yeah, I hope you're all having a great summer. I do have some other things to show with show you so I'm gonna do so I bought a few little discount orchids so I'm gonna unpop them and I'm gonna show them to you as well I did promise a video about my vandas so I'm gonna do that as well uh, for the entire month of August it's gonna be a little difficult for me to post so I'm gonna try um, every Monday to even just do a short video to see if I can you know keep in touch with you guys I'm gonna be working um, two jobs full-time both of them so I am going to be a little bit thin on time. So please bear with me. September, everything's gonna change. Everything's gonna go back to normal and I'll have more time to communicate with you guys. So I hope that you enjoy the rest of your summer. I will be in touch when I can and I will talk to you all next time.